and I get to document that. I get to be the grand archivist. We exist and we will always exist because I am here today. Hi, my name is Lisa Brown. I'm from Washington, D.C. in Compton, California. And my IG is DC Mamacita. I got started because my grandfather was a street photographer during law school and I kept nagging him about his camera. And he finally gave me a Polaroid camera and I took Polaroid pictures <laughs> for at least like a, a year every day when I was about four or five years old. And then he bought me um, a 35 millimeter Nikon, which I kept until about 13. I still have that camera. Um, I've always done photography. I've never let it uh, just become uh, something that you pick up and put down. I've always involved myself in friends, family, community, special times, sad times, but I always picked up my camera to bring with me. Even I didn't think that um, that was a career choice. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of my pictures at that time were blurry. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think a lot of my, my pictures were, I was a very short girl. I was about five, four, seven for like seven years in my life. So a lot of pictures were like the backside of people, their knees, their feet. But I also remember taking just beautiful pictures of DC, being a DC kid, going around to every neighborhood and taking pictures of mainly women, women, birds, the little things on the ground, anything that was in my sight. I didn't ever think to look up or to look even further down. So um, I took lots of pictures of funerals, mm -hmm. uh, friends playing, riding their bike, Georgia Avenue Day, Christmas trees that people used to put on their front porch when I was young. Um, some things were like, what is this? But most things were like, oh wow, from a child's perspective, they were quite, they're quite gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, so, um, it was around 2015, uh, 2016. I was uh, taking just pictures of my homegirls and my friends. And um, unfortunately, one of my friends passed away while she was on travels. And um, her mom had a memorial service for her uh, here, but was not able to bring her body back. And I remember handing some pictures over to her mom of my friend. And by her, her name was Miracle, Miracle Washington. And um, I think that was the first time that her mom was, I think I've ever seen someone say these are so beautiful and touching and not just, oh, these are nice and take it very serious um, of my photography. That really touched me. And it let me know that I had turned something, just a regular day into a beautiful scenery for someone. It was more than just a, port a portraiture. Mm -hmm. And um, that, was, that was a breaking point for me. That was a point where I needed to, to, when I pick up my camera, to have great intentions. <laughs> I shoot mainly in film. Um, I shoot uh, a lot of black and white. Sometimes I do shoot color, but I really do enjoy shooting black and white because it tells more of a story of exactly what it is and not what you want it to be. Um, you get to see exactly what it is, no matter what the person is or what the person is doing. And that is something I want people to listen to someone else's story, especially um, a black woman. I want them to, to listen to their story, listen to what they're saying, listen to their feelings, not make judgment calls, not make a, a you know, if a woman is taking smoking on a corner, I want somebody to go, oh, how horrible that is. I want you to understand the beauty of her life, of her story. That's something that um, often we're, we are not portrayed around the world as beautiful people. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I, I use as pushback in the art world. So at first I went to school and I got my degree in um, animal science because I'm a vet tech. I'm a licensed vet tech. Uh, so I have a science degree. And then I started to curveball that when I went to CCBC in Baltimore. Um, I started to really get into Africana film and Africana studies, and so I got a different degree in Africana studies also. Um, now I got accepted to go to MICA for grad school, um, and that's when I said, okay, I, I really need this degree. I need this degree to master a skill that I'm for sure that I've mastered, but I just need to also do that work structure. Um, and I also applied for the Tit Titus Higgins um, workshop which is a fellowship in Charlotte North Carolina so I also uh, critique to that 
I also critique to that of uh, a teacher that is well known photographer um, in in the field of photography, especially a black male, uh, to be able to get critiques and to have, have a narrative and a story and to be able to present a better portfolio. Black women inspire me. The diaspora of women inspire me to think about different aspects of my life, trials, tribulations, beautiful moments, gorgeous things, sexy things, down moments, up moments, sick moments. Women of color inspire me like nothing else that I've ever seen. Maybe flowers and butterflies, but if I had to say people, it would definitely always be a sister. A sister would inspire me to go to the beach. A sister would inspire me, uh, her hairdo, her earrings, the way she walks. All the sisters, they inspire me to shoot day, night, if I'm tired. I, I shoot sisters doing everything, and I do mean everything, because it's such a beautiful life. We live such a beautiful life as African uh, women of the diaspora. We live a life that people are paying to be and to look like us and to act like us. And we're not acting. This is what we do. This is a part of us. This is like seriously who we are. It's not just for the culture. This is who I am when I wake up. I'm this cute. This is my hair. And if I decided to add some more to it, that's cute too. And I like everything about myself. And I like everything about every woman I see of color. I love every aspect. Her eyelashes, her thick eyebrows, her thin eyebrows, her nose, her couture. I love everything about it. It inspires me to continue to shoot. Sometimes that's a series. Sometimes that's just what I saw for the moment or what she allowed me to see of her. It could be a glimpse. Women are transformative humans. We have a magical power that's inside of us. Uh, we're born with it, it's innate, and we utilize it all the time. So I don't think it's anything else that I particularly um, inspires me to want to shoot. I always photograph um, women at different ages, so teenagers, young women, older women, our, our elders, our seniors, our aunties. Um, we all have a different perspective, in a perspective way of life. And I think that gives us all a community, um, a sense of, of some future, some hope, some sensibility about a different thing. And that's why I, I can always shoot black women. Mm -hmm. It could be summertime vacation, or it could be you deep in your thoughts. You can go through a transition. Mm -hmm. You can be shedding. You can be ready to to upspire, you be ready to downsize, to minimize. You can be doing all these things. These are all so many whole, wholesome sides of us that um, I would love to show. Even the, what's featured here is about a mother and a daughter and about leadership and about relinquishing leadership to pass on to your next child to rule you, to make sure you're okay, mm -hmm. to be the ruler in the community, and to also then rule other children that are going to be born and raised. Um, it's considered legacy. And so that is something that is very inspirational to me, is that we as adults have a role to play, but that doesn't mean that it's always going to be in that, in that circumstance. It's not going to always be. You can't always be so telling someone else to, what to do. You may, you're may you just advising them. And that advisory is such a beautiful transition. I like to do it slow. I'm a slow. I like to do it slow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not a fast shooter. So even if it's uh, particularly in the sunlight, I've shot uh, 150 speed on color at it's Assateka Island, directly in sunlight. I love the tone of color that I get from brown skin. It is like gold. It is like gold on film. It is something that cannot be replicated. And by the way, I also don't edit any of my work. I don't edit or manipulate any flaws. I don't care if it's a thread. You're gonna see a thread because you're gonna like the thread. Because in life, threads happen. And I'm not me and fake magic, light rum and all those other people. They're, they're not impressionable on me. I really am a seeker of the dark. I love seeing darkness and then light bouncing off of it. And as people of color, you absorb the sun. The sun is on your side. You are a star and the star loves you. And the camera will always, if you slow it down, baby, it will always come true. I am, I highly believe in it. I am not the person in the light. I will walk in the darkness all day. So a slow speed film for me, I don't care if it's $3 program, I'm with it, let's go. Oh, So my most favorite shot that is my work um, is a beautiful babe, picture of a baby in 
the middle of Malcolm X Park. It's a friend of mine's baby girl. And she is the loveliest, beautiful chocolate drop I've ever seen. While she's sitting on a beautiful Mexican blanket in the middle of a park. And it just shows the gorgeousness of the tone of skin. It was um, the gorgeousness behind the scene itself. And the freedom of a black baby just to be able to play at a park. It is one of my favorite pictures that I've seen in some time. One of my career goals is to definitely make a photo book um, after grad school and to come up with a, a very strong photo book um, and to be able to teach a film to other people of color. I think it's a it's not a dying thing and I don't want it to be forgotten. So to, to teach film directly um, and then also to, to speak to some young people who want to get into photography or videography or movie of color and let them know like this is a safe space there are many places you can go who will listen and go for your 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 passion and your scene mm -hmm. so yeah i think that's some of the things um to finish my master's within you know the next three years and then to go for my doctor's degree because i want to be dr brown i want people to call me dr brown at all points of time okay we had ksu chicken i want people to be like dr brown your meal's ready thank you <laughs> i don't want people to say my first name and let's be immediately know each other and I hug you. Until then, I want to be Dr. Brown at everything. I don't, I'm sick and tired of people thinking I'm just missing something. I'm not missing anything. I'm a master of my skill and a doctor of my authority of being alive. I want people to make sure they call me Dr. Brown. That is not a sound bite. That's a real prayer. Me and the universe will work that out too. Yes, most definitely. And the money. Oh. And the tool which you're going to get paid for. Okay. Yeah. And that house going to get paid off. <laughs> and God's going to be good in my camera every day. Uh, amen that I'm on my own and so it's not a team of people like um, other industries of art behind the scenes. I don't have a team of people. I don't have an editor and all this, all the other uh, things that people can just uh, afford to do. My finances are on a budget and I definitely try to work with people on their finances too to be able to acquire my work. Um, so that could be a difficult process to saying I assess my work to a, a good degree, but I'm not out here making a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And I know other artists that are. Mm -hmm. And they are people, the same people sometimes who go out and spend fifty or sixty or eighty thousand dollars on one piece of artwork and I ask for it below five thousand and that's a problem. Especially after I graduate from grad school because today's price ain't gonna be tomorrow's price at all. I should have name up on that bill. My biggest accomplishment is that I stopped doing the things that people told me to do and start living my life through passion and start having the, all my faith in just living that life. Picking up my camera, shooting women of color, showing them in different stories and believing in my work a thousand percent gave me the ability to stand strong and have good scholar about myself. Um, show up with not just my good character, but, but have my faith behind it. And that means my child, my bills, being homeless, if I'm eating tonight or not. Having faith in what I do and my passion will be providing for me. It's like having faith in God. You know he got you all the time. You never got to work. Even if you stand in a pot of hot water, you're going to make it cold. You're going to walk away. And you will. And I have that faith in this. And that is sometimes not an easy thing to say. It is not. It brings me to tears some days. But I have to be very honest. This is what I'm going to do. Oh, please keep shooting. Shoot. Shoot it. Shoot it. Pick that camera up. Shoot it. Um, when you don't know, raise your hand. Say, I don't know and I need help, please. Don't be afraid. Ask a million people. You know, what's your question until someone answers it? One no is one no. It's, one day is going to be a yes. Keep going at it. It sounds hard. You're going to bite some things. You're going to bite your tongue. You might make it bleed. But keep shooting as much as you can until you have gotten to a point where you are understanding of what it is that you're doing wrong and what it is that you're doing right and do the right things. But keep sticking to your passion. Please keep picking your camera up regardless of what's going on. Shout out, Emma store and shout out for everyone tuning in today to this YouTube channel to learn more about African Americans in the diaspora and film photography. Thank you.